Avinu Malkanu, our Father, our King. Lord, we've, we've had our moment. We've been talking to you. We've been thanking you, praising you, worshiping you, giving you glory for all that you've done in our lives. Some of us have been crying out because we have, we're needy people. We have needs, and Lord, only you can meet them. But all of this has been our service towards you. But now in these last few moments, this is your time to speak to us, oh Lord God. Our hearts are melted before you. If, if we have any inkling of a relationship with you, our hearts are melted before you right now. Speak to our hearts, Father, by your Ruach, with your word, and help us to not just be hearers only. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen. You can be seated, worship team. Todah Rabbah. What a blessing you are. If you have your scriptures, would you lift them with me? Hafokba, hafokba, tekolaba. Hafokba, hafokba, mashiachba. Turn it and turn it. Everything you need is in it. Turn it and turn it. Messiah is in it. Amen. I hope you believe that when you say it, that it's not just rote memory, but that you really believe it. I'm going to challenge you today in what you confessed about that. Everybody say, thank you, Richard. You're, you're like, no, listen, if we don't challenge you every time you come here in your faith, in your walk with the Lord, then we're really not doing what God's called us to do. You know, I heard somebody say this week that if all you want is grace, 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 grace. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. That's all you want. It's like eating dessert at every meal and not eating any protein, not eating vegetables with minerals. And it, you're going to die on dessert. If that's all you're eating, you're going to die on dessert. So everybody say, Thank you, rabbis, for feeding us. Everybody say it. Thank you, rabbis, for feeding us. Okay, thank you, Lord. I hope you're still clapping when you leave. All right. We, earlier in the first service, we separated the millennials from the Xers from the boomers. Because when I mentioned this, and I was surprised how many people knew the show, and it's like, we got too many boomers. We need to go get some Xers and get some millennials in this house. How many of you ever saw the TV show or heard of the TV show, Truth or Consequences? Let me raise your, would you just stand up and embarrass yourself? I mean, no, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. Look, okay. It's good. Nobody, some of them don't want to stand up. Truth or Consequences. I had to look up the show is exactly how, I mean, I don't even, I remember the name. And I thought of it when I was doing my message today. Uh, truth or consequences, I had to read about online how it worked. And apparently a contestant would come. They would ask a trivia question that you could know. Even if you knew it, I heard a lot of people didn't want to guess the right answer because they wanted the consequences. The consequences, they were going to ask you to do something that kind of made you look foolish and made everybody laugh and it was a good time and they gave you money. So why not? Would you be willing to be foolish for a while and get some money for it? And so uh, truth or consequences. The reason I thought of the program was because that's really what our parasha is about today. If, if you uh, have your scriptures and you held them up and you were just delighted to say that, that everything you need is in them. If you'll turn to the parasha this week where it starts in verse 9 of chapter 6 in Better Sheet Genesis. And we're going to read verses 9 through 12 and then we're going to do what Rabbi Michael said is a good thing to do. Follow along with me. These are the genealogies of Noah. Noah. Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless among his generation. Noah continually walked with God. Everybody read that line with me. Noah continually walked with God. And Noah fathered three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was ruined before God, and the earth was filled with violence. God saw the earth, and behold, it was ruined because all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. 
We're going to come back to continually walking. But what we want to do, if you were here last week and in, in, in the last few weeks, you've heard Rabbi Michael talk about that we finish the Torah and Kol Yisrael, the last words in the Torah, and then we go back to the beginning because a lot of times you have to go back to the beginning to see the trajectory that was first set when God first dealt with mankind. You have to go back to the beginning and see the trajectory. So I just want to, you to see a little bit more. If we go back to the, to the verses just before that, verses 5 through 8. Then Adonai saw that the wickedness of humankind was great on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of their heart was only evil all the time. So Adonai regretted that he had made humankind on the earth and his heart was deeply pained. Would you read that verse with me? So Adonai regretted that he had made humankind on the earth and his heart was deeply pained. So Adonai said, I will wipe out humankind whom I have created from the face of the ground, from humankind to livestock, crawling things and the flying creatures of the sky because I regret that I made them. But Noah... Noah found favor in Adonai's eyes. If you have any kind of a relationship with the Lord, if you love him just a little bit, and if you love him a lot, I don't know how you can read that verse, how you can go across that verse, how you can hear that verse preached, that God regretted making us. You say, well, that was those bad people back there. If you had been back there, do you think you would have been in the ark or you would have been one of those people? I'll tell you, today we all think, well, I would have been in the ark. Well, if you've come to Yeshua and you've come to the ark of God's salvation, you, you could think that. But I'm telling you, all of us at one time or another have to corporately identify ourselves with all the people on the earth at that point. Because every time I hear that verse... It, the King James says it repented God that he created man. It's like he regretted it so much he just wanted to repent for making us. And every time I hear it, you know what I think? Every time I think, I'm so sorry, Father. I'm so sorry that we did that to you. When we join our hearts on Yom Kippur and pray the Ashamnu, or the Alchet prayers, and where we're corporately confessing our sins before God. That's the same sense that I get when I, when I see this verse. Every time I think, God, I'm so sorry for what we've done to you. We've broken your heart. You say, well, what did Noah do to escape it? Well, we read about it, and we said, Noah continually walked with God. Mit halach. Everybody say, mit halach. Mit halach. The word there, Rabbi Michael told me, he said, brother, I love it when, when he gets stirred up in his kishkas about Hebrew and just starts telling me a little bit than, that more than I know, which is not difficult to do. And he said, brother, this word mit halach is like, if you get the whole, if you get the context of it and the heart of it, what it is saying is that Noah continuously guarded his walk with God. He continually guarded his walk with God. He continually watched over his walk with God. Every, it, it didn't say Noah was perfect. It said he was found righteous in the eyes of the Lord, but it didn't say he was perfect. If you don't believe that's true, you should read on in a few chapters when he gets off the ark and see what he does. He wasn't perfect, but every day he kept coming back to God, coming back to God. There's something in coming back to God every day, and there's something about that that touches the heart of God. You know, when you, when you start walking in sin, and sin overcomes you and overtakes you, and, and you just get, I don't want to say possessed, but you give place to the enemy and he comes and builds a stronghold in your life. You know what you don't want to do? 
I mean, you know what you should do, but you don't want to do it. You don't want to go spend time with God. You sh- we should run to God those times and cry out to God. There's something about coming back to God every day and continuously watching and guarding over our walk with God that melts his heart. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but it means, God, I want to walk with you. I, I want to know you. I want to know you better. How does John lead us in that song? I need more of you and less of me every day. I need more of you and less of me, more of you and less of me. And as we had the bat mitzvah last week, I just thought about for a while, um, you know, when you're trying to tell people about Yeshua, if you're trying to tell our Jewish brothers in town that, that don't believe yet in Yeshua. If you're trying to tell them about Yeshua, what you want to do, what you'd like to do is say, listen, let me show you Isaiah 53 and Micah chapter 5 and let me show you Zechariah. Let me, let me I, let, just look at these scriptures. But, but the problem is with many Jewish and non-Jewish people alike, Jewish and non-Jewish, most people don't believe this is the word of God. And when you come to somebody who doesn't believe this is the word of God and you want to show them Yeshua and the word, it's, it doesn't mean anything to them. And Beth Messiah, look, when I was putting this together and I, was, and I got to thinking about do we really love the word of God and do we really mean everything that I need is in it and I'm going to stay in it and I'm going to go after it and I'm going to let you write it on my heart. I was thinking about the front of our building. And on front of our building, um, if, if, you, if you read Hebrew, you know that we have over the doors Torah, Avodah, and Chesed. And, of course, the Torah are the five books of Moses, but we've always mentioned that those five books of Moshe, they represent all the word of God. They're the word of the Lord to Israel at that time. But God sent prophets, and he sent other people to write writings, and they were all anointed of God. They're the word of the Lord. Then he sent Mashiach, the living word of the, the living Torah. And, and we have the Brit Hanashah. So we see the Torah, and we see Avodah. Avodah really stems from the Hebrew for, for uh work but it's it really means in the context over that door the the work of the Jewish people is to worship God to make God manifest so so it stands for the word of God Torah and worship and then uh, chesed is really short for gimulet, gim, gimulet chasedim the the acts of loving kindness and all that's important then if you know Hebrew overriding all of that we have Or Lehair Legoyim Betiferet Yisrael Amecha, a light of revelation to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. So as we come in here every week, as you enter those doors every week, we're profoundly declaring the word of the Lord out of there and the living Torah, the Messiah Yeshua, and the things that are important to us, we put over that door because they're important to God. But sometimes people, as I deal with, with families in the kingdom of God and I see what goes on in their lives, you know what I would like to do? And I thought about that this week in a big way. I would like to put on this side of the wall, on the inside of that wall, as we go out and we open those doors and we look up before we go outside and, my, and, and before we go outside and turn around and see all the Hebrew and what that is written there, I would like in English to put there, this is not Mars Hill. And if you don't know about Mars Hill, in, in Acts chapter 17, This is, this is a place in Athens, and it's actually called, if I, I, don't, I don't see, somebody could tell me the uh, verse that it's called. It, it's called uh, Area Agamus. Is that, I'm not even close, Opolis. Areopolis. That, but, but 
that became Mars Hill. It's a place where the philosophers and all the intellectual giants and even people who weren't intellectual giants, but they just wanted to go throw out their philosophy of life. Even people who were religious people went to this hill, this place in Athens. And, and it was a place where, where well, well, let's read a couple of things about it. And I just have two verses marked in Acts 17. <clears throat> the first one is verse 21. Now all the Athenians and foreigners visiting there used to pass their time doing nothing but telling or hearing something new. You got that? Listen, to read it with me. Now all the Athenians and foreigners visiting there used to pass their time doing nothing but telling or hearing something new. Can you get that picture? They're just out. They're, they're so smart. Shaul goes out there because one of the things, they had a little statue out there to, to the unknown God. And Shaul used it as a witnessing tool and said, listen, you know this to the unknown God? I know the God you don't know. I know the, and he preached Messiah to them. But, but you have to realize when you preach Messiah to people who don't believe the Tanakh was the word of God, and the Tanakh had been written at that point. The prophets, the writings of the Torah, they had all been written. But, but nobody really believed that was the word of the Lord. That was the revelation of God. And so they're out and, they're, and, and Shaul begins to tell them the truth. And after he talks about Yeshua and the resurrection, the, one more verse he puts there, verse 32. And it says... Now, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some began scoffing, but others said, we will hear from you again about this. Listen, we'll, we'll think about what you said. We're thinkers. They wouldn't just jump on it and believe it and run with it, they, but, they, but they will hear you again. Now, now, you say, Richard, why are you going here? And, and listen to my heart. I'm not condemning you, but as an under-shepherd, I'm urging you today. I'm not a prophet. And, and if I was a prophet, I'd be telling you, thus saith the Lord God and do. But I'm a shepherd. And, and I hurt for people when I see consequences come to their life because they don't do the word of God. They come and they listen and we treat the word, I, I hate to say this people, but a lot of times we treat the word of God like it's Mars Hill. Ah, oh, that's good. Ah, oh, Rabbi Michael, that's a good word. Oh, let me think on that. Uh, maybe maybe uh, Philip will give me something new next week. We, listen, it's not enough to hear the word of the Lord. It's got to change your life. I'm going to read to you, and you're going to see it. You're going to be able to follow along. But I'm going to read to you what was burning in my heart this week. And it wasn't a scripture verse. It was something that Winston Churchill said many years ago when Hitler had begun to make his move. And, and England and the European nations had just succumbed. They made covenants. They, it's like, are you kidding me? And so when Churchill came to power, these are the words that Winston Churchill said. The era of procrastination of half measures, of soothing and baffling expedients, of delays is coming to an end. In its place, we are entering a period of consequences. You know what expedients are? That's a handy means to an end. In other words, this, this situation is really testing you, trying you just, just do whatever's at hand and stop it and, and, or, or just compromise it. Or do a half measure with it. Read this with me. The era of procrastination, of half measures, of soothing and baffling expedients, of delays is coming to an end. In its place, we are entering a period of consequences. Now, I'm not a prophet. I told you I'm not a prophet. But I do believe in my heart that the world is... Could, I don't know who's talking over here, but if they could be quiet, it would help us. Thank you. Listen. Uh, thank you, Lord. Bless her, Father. Thank you. Help her, Abba. 
Thank you. Okay, so, so I really believe that the world in which we find ourselves living right now, we, we have treated this nation and all the nations of the world, even Israel, we've treated this word with half measures, soothing and baffling the expedience of life, delaying it, kicking the can down the road. Like we know what's going to happen, but we just keep kicking the can down the road. You know what I think of when I say kicking the can down the road? I think of America with over $19 trillion debt. And we keep electing politicians on both sides of the aisle that just keep kicking the can down the road like they don't have children and grandchildren. Like at some point, we're going to have to pay that back. Beth Messiah, listen, I believe that the nations of the earth have treated the word of God with disdain, with half measures, just lackadaisically, and at some point, and, I, and it's much closer now than it was 30 years ago, at some point, we're going to enter a period of consequences. And when we do, you have not seen anything yet like what's about to happen on the earth. But, but this is not a message to make you worry about what's going on in the world because I have good news for you today. If you would pay attention and not just listen to what we preach, not just come in here on Shabbat and say, ah, it's just Michael preacher. Oh, Philip's got to, oh, Richard, you get the shot today. Hey, Rabbi Ron comes sometime. John preaches, that's good, that's good. I like to hear different points of view. Listen to me. If you treat the word of God like that, eh, I'll have to do it. And people, we warn you about areas in your life whether it's fiscal responsibility or sexual immorality or ordering your time or watching what you say with your... If, if you treat all the areas of your life with a lackadaisical attitude, and I'll get around to that. I know I need, I know I need to do... Lord, I know. We, every high holy day, I come and I pray and I know I need to do that. Believers, listen... Because I'm not a prophet, but because I am a shepherd, I deal with the aftermath, the consequences of what happens when people don't do the will of God. Now, I'm, I could brag on a lot of you because I've watched your lives and I've watched you stumble and get back up and take hold of the Word of God and keep moving with God and keep going to God every day. And even when things look bleak and you want to give up, I've seen you hold on, get back to the Word of God, keep coming back to the Word of God. So I'm not, I'm not speaking to you as, as much, although I would tell you, don't stop now. The best is yet to be. But I am speaking to anybody here, whether it's in a family setting or whether it's in an individual life. The thing that's true in the macrocosm is also true in the microcosm. And, and, and it's easy for us to look out and say, oh, the world out there, they look just like Noah's day. Listen, my mama used to tell me, <laughs> I can still hear her telling me today. Uh, now, when I'd get to talking just a little bit about myself and what I did, she'd say, now don't break your arm patting yourself on your back. And so, ah. <laughs> oh, I can still hear, and I would like to tell all of Beth Messiah, let's don't break our arms today patting ourselves on the back because, because this message is for if every one of us today that we take heed to what is spoken. Yeshua himself said, I am the true vine and my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me, every branch in me, everybody say in me, Every branch in me that bears no fruit, my Father takes it away. And every branch in me that bears fruit, he purges it. 
cutting off some limbs there and some vines. He purges it. That hurts when you have things cut out of your life. He purges it. Why? So that it could bring more fruit. Now you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, no more can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abides in me, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Everybody say, for without him, you can do nothing. For without him, you can do nothing. If a man abides not in me, he is cast forth and withers up and men gather him and throws him into the fire and they're burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you want and it'll be done unto you. If you live in me and my words live in you, do you know the only way to make this word live in you? It's, it's, it's not just hearing it. It's not just memorizing it. I love my friend Oswald. I love his saying about this. The discipline of our fellowship with Messiah has to work through all the things which we believe in order to turn them in to real spiritual possessions. The discipline of your fellowship with the Messiah, Yeshua, has to work through all the things that you believe in order to turn them into real spiritual possessions. It's the trial of your faith that's so precious. If you want to get what you believe here, what you think and believe here, you have to get it down here. And the only way to get it from here to here is to let it flesh out in your life and to stumble and to try to do it. Yeshua also said, and this is, and I'm, I'm already headed toward the close, but this is so potent about what I'm talking about today. Yeshua said, whoever comes to me and hears my word and obeys them, I'll show you what he's like. He's like a man that built his house on a foundation of a rock. And the floods arose and the stream beat vehemently against that house and it couldn't shake it. It was founded on a rock. But if you hear what I'm saying and you don't do it, you're like a man that builds his house on the sand and the flood's coming and the stream's going to beat vehemently against it and it's going to destroy it. It's going to devastate it. How many of you have seen on the news, even in te central Texas, when those floods came and lifted houses up and put them in the river and they came up to a bridge? You ever seen that? How many of you have seen that picture? And, and I don't have to draw it any more vividly. And that house hits that bridge and it just shatters apart. Beth Messiah, look, as a shepherd, you know what? Michael and Philip and I see in people's lives, we, we see people after they didn't do what Yeshua said in different areas of their life where they just did half measures with the Word of God. And, and we see it went on for years and then we see the devastation that's caused because we don't do the Word of God. I had an opportunity to speak to somebody this week. And, and if you knew how many times I've told people this, if I had a dollar for every time, well, we'd have more money in the bank. So, and I told somebody that's, that's had a flood hit their lives. And, and do I have to remind everybody that the flood's coming? Let, let me say this in a way you can hear me. The flood's coming to your house. At some point, the flood's coming. It comes to the house built on the foundation of God's Word, and it comes to the house that's not built on the foundation. I'm not telling you today, if you really are an avid reader and an avid doer of the Word of God, I'm not telling you that you won't have floods come. They will come. Floods are hard. But after it's taken its best shot at you, you're still standing and holding on to the word of the Lord. And, and, and that's what moves the hand of God. But, but you don't get there overnight. You get there day after day and continually watching over and guarding your walk with the Lord. 
It only happens when you do it every day. You go after God every day. Now, brothers, listen. I, I don't want you to have to leave here today and not think about the sign inside, this is not Mars Hill, because the, we're not going to put the sign up there. But, but every day, I want you inwardly look. God wants this. As a shepherd in me, I'm not pronouncing judgment. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing is urging you to do this. I told this brother that I talked to this week who had the flood come, and I said, brother, listen to me. When is the last time you said out loud, Satan, you will not have my house? Because the word of God says, Yeshua himself said, I have given you authority to trample over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. And therefore, you get your hands off my marriage. You get your hands off my wife. You get your hands off my children. When's the last time you did that? And, and, and I asked that to a man 25 years ago. I've told you about it. The enemy, had, this was a man who was strong. We thought him and his, he and his wife, they were looked at as stalwarts in the kingdom of God. And I asked him that question 25 years ago. Brother, when's the last time you bound the enemy off your wife and quoted the word of God and said the word of God over your house? And, he, and I will never forget his answer. He was 20 years married, 20 years and 25 years in the kingdom of God. And he said, I've never done that. And I thought, well, well, duh, gosh, I know. I told the brother this week, I know it seems crazy. But, but look at Yeshua. How, what did he say when the enemy came against him? It is written. It is written. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. It is written. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. If Yeshua had to fight off the devil with the word of God, it is written. It is written. You know, young people, listen to me. I'm a papa to you. It, when's the last time your wife heard you pray to start a day? Father, we declare the lordship of Yeshua. I'm the man of this house. I declare the lordship of Yeshua over my wife and over my children. I declare your word says resist the devil. He flees from you. Draw close to God. He draws close to you. When's the last time you did that and your wife heard you say that? And, and, I, and nobody, I'm not asking for hands raised. You know what I think I would find today if I did ask for hands? There would be too many that say, oh, I've never done, I don't feel, I don't feel comfort, comfortable. I feel awkward doing something like that. Well, the devil feels quite comfortable with your attitude. But I'm telling you, as a papa, I've seen, I've been there to try to pick up the pieces with people. When, when you realize they're not praying, they're not claiming the word of God, God, please help Beth Messiah. I want us to be strong. Most of you, I know you're walking. I see, and I'm proud of you in the Lord. Don't stop now. More of him and less of you every day. But, but keep the word of God coming in your lives and in your heart. It's, listen, do you know what the last verse of the book of Judges says? The last verse of the book of Judges. It said, in those days, there was no king in Israel. And every man did what was right in his own eyes. And that's why America and the nations of the earth are in trouble. But we don't, we don't work like that. We don't live like that. We have a king and he has a word and he has commandments. And we either live by his word or we die without his word. And I don't want to die without his word. If... If I go down fighting, I want to be fighting with the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the Lord. So I'm encouraging everybody. I'm not condemning you, but I'm, and I'm not speaking to you as a prophet. Thus saith the Lord, I'm, not, I'm telling you, you've got to get hold of these principles in every area of your life. Every area. You say, well, I can't do that in a day. That's why I'm telling you every day, 
every day. When God points out something to you that you need to improve or do, keep letting him deal with you. If you stumble 84 days in a row, get up on day 85 going, God, this is my day. Listen, I'm serious, Beth Messiah. Did, did, I'm just going to read this. I don't want it on the screen. I'm just going to read this one more time. I want you to look at your attitude toward the word of the Lord. Do you treat it with half measures, with soothing and baffling expedients, delays, compromises? Or do you treat it like, Lord, you say it, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. If I stumble, please pick me back up. I'm going to do this in every area. Speak to every area of my life. Father, I, I pray today that you would speak to every area of Beth Messiah's life. Every one of us. That you would speak to those areas in our lives where we're weak. Father, your word says in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. So we're some candidates in here for your strength to show up because we're weak in areas. But Lord, we're, we're calling down and believing for your strength to show up in our weaknesses today. And, and I'm asking for all the men and women that are married, those that are single. Lord, I'm asking today that you would help them to rise up where areas of immorality are involved, that they would Get them out of their lives and get you in. Get the power of your spirit into their lives and get the devil and the enemy out of their lives, out of their families, out of their relationships. Lord, that they would learn to fight as a couple. If they're a married couple, they would learn to fight as a couple against the powers of darkness and bring your will over their children every day that the enemy would not have their children. If they're older and their children are already out of their houses, Lord, I pray that husbands and wives would come together and agree and pray for your will to come down and bring their children back to the kingdom of God. Bring them into the salvation knowledge of Yeshua. Lord God, Messiah, I can hear his words 2,000 years later again today saying, nevertheless, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Father, I just pray that in all of our lives, singles, marriage, children, that you would find faith in us, that we would call out those things which be not as though they were. We would call down your word out of heaven to be done, that, that, that we could, before our spouses, we would call down your word to be done, your kingdom come, your will be done. Mashiach taught us how to pray it. Help us to pray it, to say it, to declare it, and to believe it in our heart. Because, Lord, you, you showed us today and you've tried to speak this to us for years. The flood is coming. The flood on the earth is coming. Your word is clear that there's coming on the earth a time that we've never seen before. The likes of which we've never seen before. It's coming. Lord, that Beth Messiah would be a people prepared for the flood. That our house would be on the rock of Yeshua on the rock of your word that we wouldn't be given over to the wiles and schemes of the devil, but that we would stand strong in the Messiah Yeshua, that his will could be done. It's in his name we thank you. Amen and amen.